Welcome to Screen Scan. Today, we will recap the 2022 movie The Good Nurse. Let's dive in. The movie opens in 1996 at St. Aloysius Hospital in Pennsylvania, where an unexpected medical crisis prompts a flurry of activity as nurses and doctors rush to the ward in an attempt to assist a patient. Despite their diligent attempts, they are unable to save the patient, and the ominous beep of the heart monitor signals the patient's demise. Charlie, a young nurse and the first to react to the emergency, watches in despair as the patient passes away. In 2003, Amy Lufrin, portrayed by Jessica Chastain, is a well-respected nurse at Parkfield Memorial Hospital in New Jersey, known for her outstanding dedication both to her fellow staff members and her patients. She earns high praise for her empathy, often allowing families extended visits beyond the designated hours when circumstances permit and is always ready to lend a helping hand. Despite her professional success, Amy faces significant personal challenges. As a single mother to two daughters who yearn for more time with her, Amy struggles to balance work and family life, often relying on her nanny, Jackie, for support. Additionally, Amy is grappling with a severe heart condition that necessitates an urgent transplant to avert a life-threatening situation. However, financial constraints and a lack of time, compounded by the absence of health insurance until she works another four months, force her to postpone the surgery. The costs of her medical tests alone are a financial burden she can barely manage. Fearing potential job loss if her condition were disclosed, particularly under the stress and risk it entails, Amy chooses to keep her health struggles a secret from her colleagues. Believing that the hospital administration would terminate her employment if they were aware of the severity of her situation, in this backdrop, the hospital staff welcomes a new addition, a male nurse named Charles Cullen, played by Eddie Redmayne. Amy and Charles strike up a friendship shortly after his arrival. Charles shows remarkable kindness and support towards Amy, solidifying their bond rapidly. One evening, while on duty, Amy experiences a health episode, inadvertently revealing her heart condition to Charles. To her relief, Charles is empathetic towards her plight and vows to keep her secret, also offering his support for the upcoming four months. Yet, the dynamic between Amy and Charles takes a turn following a series of unexpected deaths at the hospital, altering the course of their previously amicable relationship. Several days later, a patient, typically under Amy's care, dies under mysterious circumstances on a night when she was not on duty. While certain irregularities in the patient's vital signs hinted at an unnatural cause of death, the staff did not immediately delve into the matter. Around this time, Charles shares a deeply personal story with Amy, recounting the loss of his own mother in his childhood. He describes the distressing experience of the hospital misplacing her body for a few hours, only to later find it and leave it unattended. This shared vulnerability fosters a closer connection between Amy and Charles, who finds solace in their friendship without venturing into a romantic relationship. Fulfilling his promise to support Amy, Charles frequently visits her home to look after her daughters while she is at work further integrating himself into her life. He also confides in Amy about his painful past, revealing that he lost custody of his daughters following a divorce. His ex-wife's accusations of him mistreating their pet dogs had led to him being barred from seeing his daughters. Trusting Charles, Amy accepts his explanations and stories at face value, appreciating his presence and assistance during her difficult times. During this period, Hospital management discovered that the deceased patient had experienced an unusual reaction to the medications administered. Protocol dictated that such incidents should be reported to the police for investigation, and albeit with hesitation, Parkfield's administration complied. Hospitals typically dread the possibility of being held liable for negligence or misconduct by their staff, and Parkfield was no exception. To mitigate the risk of a thorough external investigation, the hospital's risk manager, Linda Garran, portrayed by Kim Dickens, delayed notifying the police until seven weeks after the incident. The official rationale given for this delay was the time required to conduct an internal investigation. However, this postponement was strategically chosen to obscure any potential evidence that could be incriminating or lead to further scrutiny. Following the cremation of the patient by her family, who remained unaware of the true cause of her death due to the hospital's lack of transparency, the investigation led by police officers Danny Baldwin, played by Namdi Asamuga, and Tim Braun, played by Noah Emmerich, faced significant challenges. Their inquiries involved speaking to the nursing and hospital staff under the watchful eye of Linda, the risk manager. However, a fortuitous moment occurred when Linda had to leave for an urgent meeting, allowing Amy to communicate openly with the officers. During this candid discussion, Amy revealed that the patient had been administered an overdose of insulin despite not having diabetes, pointing to a glaring case of negligence. 
Additionally, the patient had been given digoxin, another medication that potentially contributed to her untimely death, further complicating the situation and indicating malpractice or intentional harm. The investigation takes a turn when the officers discover that Charles Cullen had previously faced a criminal charge for trespassing in Pennsylvania. Their discussions with law enforcement officials in that state lead them to a troubling hypothesis. Charles had been employed as a nurse at approximately six hospitals over recent years, yet none of these institutions were willing to disclose details about his employment history. This reluctance suggested that Charles might have been involved in questionable activities at each location, with the hospitals choosing silence to avoid potential repercussions. The Parkfield administration's response to the officers' inquiries further supports this theory. They provide misleading and incomplete documentation regarding the medication records handled by the nursing staff. Additionally, the absence of the patient's body, already cremated by her family, eliminates the possibility of conducting further forensic analyses. This combination of factors presents significant obstacles to the investigation, hinting at a systemic issue of covering up potentially harmful actions to protect institutional reputation. Just as the investigation seems to be facing insurmountable obstacles, another patient tragically succumbs to an overdose of insulin and digoxin. Despite being barred from the hospital premises due to an altercation, Danny had confronted Linda for withholding evidence. The officers are informed of this latest incident by Amy. The news deeply unsettles Amy, especially given the suspicions surrounding her friend Charles. Despite her initial shock and disbelief, she resolves to uncover the truth herself. In her quest for answers, Amy reaches out to a nursing colleague who had previously worked alongside Charles at another hospital. This encounter proves to be illuminating, as the friend corroborates the existence of rumors that Charles was implicated in patient deaths through medication overdoses. The hospital had experienced an unusually high number of unexplained fatalities during Charles's tenure, lending credence to the investigator's theory and further implicating Charles in these grave actions. Amy delves deeper into her investigation at Parkfield, where she uncovers definitive evidence of foul play. She notices signs of tampering on the bags of four fluids routinely administered to patients, discovering that insulin had been illicitly added to these bags. This revelation points directly to Charles's involvement in the medication manipulation. Further scrutiny of the hospital's medicine disposal system, which nurses regularly use, reveals more damning evidence against Charles. Amy discovers records indicating Charles's exploitation of a loophole in the system to extract multiple doses of insulin and digoxin undetected. Charles had previously demonstrated this loophole to Amy under the guise of assistance when she suffered a heart-related incident at the hospital. He showed her how canceling a drug request at a specific moment would erase the request from the system's records, yet the medication would still be dispensed. Armed with this crucial information, Amy approaches the investigators, hoping her findings would serve as the linchpin in building a case against Charles. However, she encounters a significant legal hurdle. The very mechanism Charles exploited to obtain the drugs left a paper trail indicating the request had been canceled, rendering this evidence inadmissible in court due to the lack of a direct link to him administering the drugs to patients. This discovery underscores the cunning with which Charles had operated, making it challenging to directly implicate him through conventional legal means. The evidence Amy uncovers irrefutably suggests that Charles Cullen was deliberately contaminating four fluid bags with insulin and digoxin, methodically causing the deaths of patients over several hours. To substantiate the cause of death further, investigators exhume the body of the second victim, confirming she succumbed to an overdose of both substances. Upon presenting their findings to Parkfield Hospital, the institution's response is to terminate Charles's employment immediately. However, their grounds for dismissal relate to a minor discrepancy in the details Charles provided about his past employment, rather than the grave allegations of his involvement in patient deaths. This pattern of behavior is not unique to Parkfield. It becomes clear that previous hospitals had also dismissed Charles under similar circumstances whenever suspicions arose about his conduct, all in an effort to dodge accountability and the potential scandal of harboring a serial killer within their staff. These actions reflect a broader tendency within the healthcare system to prioritize institutional reputation over the pursuit of justice and the safety of patients. Faced with the challenge of bringing Charles to account for his actions, especially now that he has been dismissed and thus removed from their immediate reach, the investigators recognize the need to elicit a confession from him directly. Given her close relationship with Charles and her involvement in uncovering his malpractices, they turn to Amy, seeking her assistance to draw out a confession from Charles, thereby advancing their quest for justice amidst complex legal and ethical dilemmas. 
From the moment Amy comes to terms with the true nature of Charles's actions, her anxiety around him escalates significantly. Despite her growing fear, she maintains the facade of their friendship, acutely aware of her vulnerable position, particularly because of Charles's relationship with her daughters and his regular visits to her home. This tension peaks on the day Charles is dismissed from the hospital, and Amy discovers him at her house with her daughters while she is absent, an encounter that leaves her profoundly unsettled. Yet, she chooses not to voice her apprehensions, instead electing to assist the investigators by attempting to coax a confession from Charles during recorded conversations. Unfortunately, this strategy fails to yield the desired admission of guilt. In the meantime, Charles secures employment at another hospital with alarming speed, heightening the investigators' concern over the potential risk he poses to more patients. Faced with the urgency of the situation, they decide to arrest Charles to prevent further harm. However, their relief is tempered by the looming legal constraint that requires them to release him within 48 hours if they cannot procure a confession or find sufficient evidence to hold him. This precarious situation underscores the gravity of their task and the critical need to gather irrefutable evidence or elicit a confession to ensure Charles cannot continue his deadly pattern. Charles Cullen responds to questioning with denial and agitation, resorting to frantic declarations that he cannot divulge any details about his actions. In a pivotal moment, Amy chooses to intervene once more, this time by visiting Charles at the police station. She approaches him with compassion and gentle encouragement, a strategy that proves effective. Charles becomes more receptive under Amy's empathetic presence. When Amy inquires about the motives behind his lethal actions, Charles acknowledges the gravity of his deeds, confessing to the killing of numerous patients. However, he expresses confusion about his motives, stating that he himself does not understand why he committed such acts. Charles Cullen, a nurse, was apprehended in 2003 following his confession to the murders of 29 patients, whom he killed by overdosing them on insulin and digoxin. Subsequent analysis by experts and scholars has led to the estimation that Cullen's actual victim count may be as high as 400, given the difficulty in determining the precise number of his crimes. Cullen has occasionally claimed in interviews that his actions were motivated by a desire to spare patients from suffering under poor hospital care, although many of his victims were not in terminal conditions. The influence of his mother's negative experiences in a hospital likely contributed to Cullen's deep-seated distrust and animosity towards medical institutions. The good nurse concludes by providing an overview of the real-life case, noting that Charles Cullen was sentenced to 18 consecutive life terms in 2003. He remains incarcerated, serving his sentence for the numerous lives he took under the guise of his nursing profession.